Okay, so welcome back to this next video on the calcium CAM module independent kinase 2, or the CAM kinase 2. Okay, so we've just discussed uh, how uh, we can convert ApoCAM modulin into a calcium CAM modulin complex by binding four calcium ions uh, into the uh, four calcium binding sites on the uh, CAM modulin molecule. Now, uh, what can happen now is that calcium calmodulin can bind basically to this regulatory domain of um, the uh, CAM kinase 2. And what that does is it changes the conformation of that regulatory domain and it moves the pseudo substrate out of the uh, active site of the kinase domain of the enzyme. So let me draw this down here. So if we have the kinase portion of the enzyme here, so this is the kinase. And um, here's the linker linking us up to the hub domain down here, right? So what's happened is that calcium uh, calmodulin um, complexes have linked, have bound to this, um, have bound to this um, regulatory domain of the CAM kinase two. Okay, so that's what I'm showing here. This is a uh, calcium calmodulin complex shown here, and uh, this is the regulatory subunit now. Um, well, the regulatory domain, sorry, uh, now removed from the active site of the kinase enzyme here. So this was the kinase portion of the um, enzyme. Okay, and this was the hub portion, and this is the regulatory domain now yielded useless, basically. Regulated, regulatory domain. Okay, right. So um, that's what happens when calcium calmodulin binds to it. So... Um, an important thing to say is that uh, the, stimula the stimulatability of um, calcium calmodulin uh, dependent kinase 2s is dependent upon how large this linker region is. Now, there are lots of different types of CAM kinase 2s, and the bit that varies the most is this linker bit here. So I'll highlight it. This portion here can vary hugely in uh, how long it is. And basically, if it's very, very short, that's going to mean that this kinase portion and this regulatory domain are very tightly opposed with the hub region over here. So this 12-membered um, hub um, ring here. Okay. Um, and that's going to mean that calcium calmodulin complexes have a very difficult time getting in to bind to the regulatory domain. So if the linker region is very short, the calcium calmodulin dependent kinase 2 is very difficult to stimulate. So where should I write this? Write this down here. Linker, basically, if the linker is short, that means it's difficult to stimulate. Difficult to stimulate. Okay? Whereas, if the linker is very long, then that's going to mean that the uh, kinase portion of the uh, enzyme is going to be held much further away from the hub region, along with the regulatory subunit. And there's going to be loads of space. You know, the CAM kinase is easily going to be able to come in here. It's not very tight, basically. Uh, so a long uh, linker region means that the uh, CAM kinase is e two is easier to stimulate, basically. So uh, that's an important concept. Okay, right. Now what we will move on to is um, the autophosphorylation of CAM kinase 2s, and then we'll discuss how this affects their function, basically. Okay, right. So, oh, I should have just mentioned, actually. So once uh, calcium calmodulin complexes have bound to this regulatory domain, this kinase enzyme becomes active now. It's no longer got this regulatory domain sitting in there and acting as a pseudo-substrate. So it is free to add phosphate groups onto proteins. It is an active kinase now. Okay, right. So um, you've now got an active kinase. Now what we want to discuss is the autophosphorylation. Okay, so this is a complicated topic. Basically, what can happen is that um, the CAM kinase uh, 2 enzymes can phosphorylate their neighbours in this great big um, circular hub thing. Uh, 
Uh, so we know that the CAM kinase 2 enzymes no, don't uh, go around on their own. They sit in these huge great oligomers, which have 12 uh, CAM kinase enzymes in, and they are arranged in these two uh, rings, basically, like so. So I'll draw this out again. Okay, so we've got these two rings stacked on top of each other, which are where the hub regions of the CAM kinase 2 uh, enzymes uh, are basically all, um, um, all bound together, basically. Okay, so now let me show uh, two of the neighbouring enzymes. So let's put the linker regions of two of these in, basically. And uh, here is the... Uh, kinase region of this enzyme up here. So let me bring this down a bit. So this one has its kinase region up here. So there's its kinase region. And let's say that this one has been uh, had its regulatory domain bound to calcium calmodulin complex. So here's our calcium calmodulin complex. So I will colour that calcium calmodulin complex in a certain colour. So this is the calcium calmodulin complex in orange that's now bound to the regulatory subunit of that CAM kinase 2 enzyme. Now here we will show this neighbouring um, CAM kinase 2 enzyme. So here's the kinase portion of the CAM kinase 2 enzyme. And let's say that it too has had a uh, calcium calmodulin complex bound to its regulatory subunit, uh, well, regulatory domain, I apologise, I continue uh, to say uh, regulatory subunit, it's a regulatory domain, the CAM kinase 2 is a single enzyme. Right, um, okay, so there we go, there's the calcium calmodulin complex bound to this regulatory domain of this neighbouring CAM kinase 2 enzyme. Now, both of these uh, kinase domains are now active. And because they are neighbours, what they are capable of doing is phosphorylating a threonine residue on um, the regulatory subunit of their neighbour. So basically, there is a threonine residue at position 286, so I will call this. So in the regulatory subunit, uh, regulatory domain of the CAM kinase 2 enzyme, there is a threonine residue. And if you're interested, it is at position 286. Now, let me just revise the structure of threonine residue with you. So let's draw the typical amino acid structure. So here is the amino group here. Here is the alpha carbon down here. Then the carboxyl group down here. Okay. And then off the alpha carbon, you also have a hydrogen. And then off here, you have the R group. Now, in the case of threonine, you have a hydroxyl group here off this methylene group. But this methylene group also has a methyl bound to it here. Okay, so there we go. That is the structure of threonine. That's the R group that you have on a threonine uh, residue. Right, so this hydroxyl group can be phosphorylated, basically. You can add... Um, a uh, phosphate group onto this. So let me just show you the structure of a phosphate group, and I'll do it down here because there's not really uh, that much space. So a phosphate group consists of a phosphorus atom, which is double bonded to oxygen, and then has two hydroxyl groups coming off, and then is singly bonded to an oxygen over here, which has then uh, acquired an extra electron to get a negative charge. Now, what you can do is form effectively an ester link between um, this phosphorus atom and this oxygen, um, which by removing this hydroxyl group from the phosphorus and removing the hydrogen from that hydroxyl group on the threonine amino acids, so you remove these two here to produce water, which is why it's known as a condensation reaction. And then you bind that oxygen with the phosphorus atom. Okay, and that phosphorylates the uh, threonine uh, residue. Now, uh, this kinase domain of the CAM kinase 2 enzyme, this is the sort of reaction it catalyzes. It is a kinase. It likes adding phosphate groups to things. So, uh, what it can do is it can, this enzyme here, the kinase domain of this CAM kinase here, so let's call this CAM kinase 1 here, and let's call this CAM kinase 2 here. The kinase domain of CAM kinase, uh, of CAM kinase 1 can add a phosphate group onto the threonine residue at position 286 of CAM kinase 2. So it can add on a phosphate group here. So I will draw an arrow. It can do this, okay?
Similarly, the kinase domain of CAM kinase 2 can add a phosphate group onto the threonine residue at position 286 of CAM kinase um, 1, basic. CAM kinase, well, sorry, CAM kinase 2, 1. Um, okay, so this one can add a phosphate group on here. So the second CAM kinase 2 enzyme can add a phosphate group onto the threonine 286 of the first CAM kinase 2 enzyme. Right, okay, now, once you have done this, it makes the CAM kinase constitutively active, which means that even if this calcium calmodulin complex falls off, because the regulatory subunit has the phosphate group attached to threonine 286, it will not repeat, it will not go back into the active site, it remains out of the active site. So even if the calcium calmodulin complex dissociates, maybe because the calcium signal has ended, the calcium has gone back down in the cytoplasm, the kinase enzyme will remain active, and that's known as constitutively active. So this becomes constitutively active. So it remains active, basically, until some enzyme comes and chops this phosphate group off, constitutively active. Okay, now I want to um, tell you some rules about this process here. Firstly, this process is known as autophosphorylation, uh, i.e. this activation by two neighbouring CAM kinase 2 enzymes of each other. That's what's known as autophosphorylation because it's self-phosphorylation. It's not quite self-phosphorylation because self-phosphorylation, you would think, would be the enzyme itself adds a phosphate group onto itself. But if you imagine the fact, if you remember the fact that this CAM kinase 2 enzyme is actually identical to this CAM kinase 2 um, enzyme, then effectively they're the same thing. So that's why it's sort of autophosphorylation. It's phosphorylating the same type of enzyme as itself. But it is not actually phosphorylating itself. Okay? So I hope that I, that's clear. Um, now, another rule is that in order to phosphorylate your neighbour, your neighbour has to have calcium calmodulin bound. So, for instance, if I draw the other neighbour of this enzyme here, so let's draw another neighbour here, and this one's difficult to draw because it's just in a bad plane, so I'll draw it right out here just so that I can um, not make a mess of the picture up there. Okay, right. So here's the kinase domain of... Um, this CAM kinase 2 enzyme here, okay, and here's the regulatory subunit. Now, let's say this CAM kinase 2 has not been lucky enough to have a calcium calmodulin complex bind to it. So, its regulatory subunit or regulatory domain is still bound uh, in the active site of the kinase domain, okay? So, it's still acting as a pseudo substrate for the active site, okay? Uh, now, uh, this enzyme, this ca uh, the first CAM kinase 2 enzyme, is not capable of phosphorylating this one's threonine 286 because even though it's its neighbour, it does not have a calcium calmodulin complex bound to it. So you can only constitutively activate uh, another CAM kinase 2 enzyme uh, if it already has a calcium calmodulin bound to it, i.e. if it's already active. You can extend its activity, basically, but you can't trigger its activity. Okay, another rule. You can only phosphorylate your neighbours. You cannot phosphorylate someone right over here, basically. This one can phosphorylate this one and this one, if they have the calcium calmodulin complex bound to them. Okay, we'll continue this discussion in the next video.